Hey guys, in today's video, I wanted to see if I can generate AI 3D shapes and import them into ZBrush as a uh, base mesh starting point, uh, just as an exploration and use them for further uh, sculpting. Or is it even uh, useful at all, right? So um, currently there is a, a website that is allowing you to create free 3D meshes, um, sort of like mid journey, but for 3D uh, assets, right? And it's gonna give you a kind of a low poly blob. That's what this is, right? It, it's not that appealing. And it does give you textures, uh, which is cool. But again, it's not really useful as a final uh, game, you know, product, but it's definitely useful enough to use as a starting point instead of starting from basic uh, primitives. So here's an example, right? I generated a sci-fi weapon and I brought it into ZBrush. And when it comes in, it comes in with a texture. So let me show you uh, how I did that. So there's a website called um, lumalabs.ai. It's currently free. So maybe uh, while it's free and it's still in beta, uh, you should take advantage of it as well but uh, you can play around with it, but you can uh, log in into um, the website using your uh, Gmail. And then if you go into Imagine, uh, there's a section in here, right? That, and you can see I already typed in sci-fi weapon, but there's a section in here that allows you to prompt, uh, you know, anything you want text to 3D pretty much. If you wanted to see some examples of existing prompts, you can, for example, click on this uh, character here and you can see what was typed to generate this right so this is uh, mini bunny floppy ears and adorable if i click on something uh, like this i can see it's called aztec sculpture blah 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 right so let's generate our own so if you wanted to create some uh, concept and i actually like this dog one right here and if i just simply even say let's say i like this and i just say use the prompt Obviously, it's not going to be using, uh, it's not going to create exactly the same dog, but it's going to do something similar. And then just like in Mid Journey, you can create different uh, variations of it, which is kind of cool. So here's an example of a dog, right? And it's very similar, but yet it's different. I can say retry to maybe I want to do a different variation. So let's try that. I'm going to do retry. All right, so this is pretty cool. Let's say I like one of these. Um, let's say I like this one right here. So I'm going to click on it and see what that looks like. All right, so I can spin it around. And again, it's not really detailed or uh, usable, but think of this in terms of base mesh, right? As a base mesh with proper scale, uh, this is pretty awesome. It's definitely better sometimes to uh, start with something like this versus just a sphere, right? So how do we bring this into ZBrush? Uh, just to take a look, right? So to do this, um, I can, choose from different uh, file formats. I'm gonna choose Maya uh, because I'm going into ZBrush. I know that FBX is going to be um, perfect, right? So I'm gonna do FBX. I guess it doesn't really matter which one you choose, but you wanna, F you wanna uh, choose FBX and just say download. All right, once the file downloads, let's hop into ZBrush. All right, and here in ZBrush, I'm just gonna simply say import I'm gonna find the model that I just downloaded. I'm gonna say okay. All right, and here's the uh, file. If I wanted to, I can go to geometry. I can probably turn on uh, dynamic subdivision to make it uh, smooth, right? Let's do a quick BPR. We can see what that looks like. But again, think of this as uh, literally just a base mesh uh, that we can use as a starting point. Now I can come uh, here into uh, texture map and I can of course turn my texture and take a look and see uh, what it gives me. So from this point on, I can create, uh, you know, start chiseling with this, maybe br uh, bring up some uh, references and, uh, you know, very quickly create a um, pretty much perfect appealing uh, model, right? So just an, an interesting alternative for a workflow that um, maybe you could explore as well, right? Now, what else could we do with this? Now, a lot of times um, you see in video games, you have objects like a spaceship or a sci-fi or, you know, a sci-fi weapon or maybe a male or a female body, right? You see them kind of just spinning around like this. And this uh, AI 
Uh, it doesn't create detailed game-ready meshes, but it does give us something interesting that we could use. Uh, for example, let me show you. If I use this uh, dog right here, right? What I could do is I can go to the light box and then I can go into something called render set. And in render set, you have all these options for your BPR renders. So let's say I want to um, have this dog spin on some computer screen in some lab somewhere, right? In the, maybe in the game as a, as a, you know, like a video sequence or an image sequence. Um, what I could do is I can click on this Blueprint 03. And if I press uh, comma on my keyboard, I can close my light box. It looks like nothing happens, but if we uh, render a BPR, you can see what that looks like, right? So let me zoom in. And uh, now what I could do, check this out. I can go to uh, movie. I can go to, let's go to title image and let's turn off any kind of logos or anything like that. So I'm gonna do title image zero on both. Overlay image, I don't want any overlay image. Um, I don't want a window because I don't want all this uh, extra stuff. So I just want the dock. And we could do uh, medium, right, just for this test. Uh, and let's do a uh, turntable, right? I'm just gonna simply do turntable. And by default, I believe it's gonna spin on Y. And if we wanted to double check that, we can go to uh, modifiers and we can see that's currently it's gonna spin on Y. If you wanna spin it, you know, a different way, you can of course control that as well, right? And let's just do a uh, quick turntable. All right, so once it finishes, I can go to movie. I can say H for high quality. And let's just simply export this movie out. All right, let's check this out. So we have a movie, it's only 14 megabytes. If I double click on it, I can see what that looks like. And voila, so I have a cool little uh, spinning mesh, right? That is pretty much perfect. And of course, at this point, uh, you can crop it, you can uh, bring it into a video editing program and add all kinds of uh, effects to it. But let's say, um, what if we wanted to change maybe some colors on this, right? Maybe I don't want it blue, maybe I want it green. Of course, again, you can do it in video editing, but um, you know, what if you wanted to maybe have the dog be one color and then the background another color? If you ever want to do that, uh, what you could do is you can go to uh, render and you can go to BPR filters and in here because we chose that specific uh, blue one right you could see which circles have been activated so all the ones that are open circles those are the ones that have been turned on right so if I uh, do a BPR and then come back into the render uh, filters I can see that this is blue right so for example if I click on it and start changing it let's say I want to change it to uh, green right I can see that the dog is going to be green and maybe, you know, maybe I want a purple dog on a, blue, uh, you know, green background, right? Whatever. So I'm going to choose purple here. I can, let's click on this one. Now this is going to be the background, right? So we can check, check change the background. Let me make this, maybe I'll make it green. So check this out, now we have two uh, spinning uh, dogs. How cool is that? So I just wanted to show you this fun little uh, workflow. And uh, I really believe you can use uh, AI, even though it's not ready for, uh, again, game assets. You could use it and bring it into Maya or uh, ZBrush and use it just as a reference for scaling or um, you know just concepting uh, shapes and so on. I hope you found this uh, video useful and I'll see you next one.